how can you better prepare for your next instrument pilot lesson? What's happening, M0A Nation? Jason here, fresh off the Private Pilot Podcast, fresh off the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, deep into the new Flight Lesson series. What an amazing opportunity and blessing it is to be with you all this afternoon. Those of you watching this on Facebook and YouTube, I'm waving at you. Those of you listening to this, where are you listening from? I'd always, I'm always curious to know. I'm, I'm really weird. I listen to podcasts at the gym. You know, most people listen to like motivational music and stuff. I listen to podcasts like that. That motivates me. I don't know, it's audiobooks and podcasts at the gym. Are you driving? Are you at the gym? Are you walking the dog? Will you send me a message one day? I, I want to know how you consume this content. Some of you, I know that you watch this, you just open it in a tab, press play, and then pretend on your keyboards that you're working, but you got a headphone in over there. I know, your boss has told me. Anyways, this is the Instrument Pilot Podcast. I'm so thankful to be with you all today. Last week on the Private Pilot Podcast, I shared getting the most out of your flight training, really your the next Private Pilot lesson. I want to do the same for Instrument Pilot here today. I want to share how to maximize your instrument flight lessons. And I want to, these have to be taken in two folds a pre-instrument pilot student and someone who's deep into their instrument pilot training. So I don't wanna waste any time with this. I wanna dive right into it. You are a brand new instrument pilot student um, or you're less than 10 instrument lessons even. I'd still almost call that brand new. How can we get the most out of every lesson? You need to realize um, instrument flying first is all about radio communications. If you are weak or lacking in the area of radio communications, well, first off, there's some great 31 Days Safer Pilot Challenge videos in January of this year, 2022, to go serve you. Um, if not, you need to find ways to brush up on your radio communications. I can do and will do entire podcasts and series on radio communications, but you need to brush up on it. Here's the mistake I made. I did my entire private pilot certificate doing only the required three takeoffs and landings at a towered field to a full stop taxi, and that's it. I didn't talk to another controller after that, and that was a bad first experience if you know that story. So there's that aspect of things. Then in addition to this, I had heard of this thing called flight following, but I had never grabbed flight following before. Heard of flight following? Never actually grabbed flight following before. So that was a unique challenge uh, as well. Because if I had earned and learned how to earn VFR flight following early on, and someone told me, Jason, VFR flight following is like as close as you're gonna get to the instrument pilot environment as far as radio communications actually go. That would have served me. You know, if you're flying out of a, a peach tree or, uh, you know, an Addison or a Van Nuys, John Wayne, a busy airport, you're going to have no problem for instrument flying if you're good on the radios. Uh, then it becomes the next tip, which is situational awareness we'll get to. Spoiler alert. If you struggle with radio communications, you're going to struggle early on an instrument. I don't want to profess that curse on anybody, but if you're not willing to work on it, uh, you need to start doing such. I need you to get out there and find ways to practice, fly into the class delta, out of the class delta, stop, find the class delta has lunch. So you gotta get in there, talk to ground, shut down, talk, you know, eat lunch, talk to ground again, get out of there, get flight falling on the way, stumble, make mistakes, it's A-OK, -okay. it's part of the process. It'll make your instrument flying so much easier because it's so easy when flying instrument to fall behind the airplane. And when your radio communications are poor, you fall even faster and further behind the airplane. We want to stay ahead of it. Work on your radio communications. The second tip is, and this is early on, is we have to increase our situational awareness. Where am I in space at all times? My instructor used to do something crazy. Back in the olden days, we used to have paper charts, and she would ask me, put your finger where we are on the chart. Put your finger, where am I on this approach right now? Put, and now we look at four flight and it tells us that. But there, back in the olden days when we had paper, I'd have to put my finger down on where we were or where I thought 
We were, and always worked to maintain situational awareness. I ask this question often, where do I fit in the ecosystem? Where do I fit in this architecture? Meaning, there's a Mooney on a three mile final, there's this guy doing this, there's this lady doing this, like there's so much going on. When you get good at radios, you, you have to stop just thinking about yourself and thinking about everybody else in space and their situational awareness and your situational awareness as to how you fit into this ecosystem, this operating system, this business archi this architecture, whatever. Sorry, I've been thinking a lot about business architecture lately, so that just came out. In this architecture of things, where does that all fit? Start with those two things. If you're new to instrument flying, start with radios. And secondly, always think about where am I and what could be next. If you're deeper into your instrument flying, the situational awareness still applies to you very much so, right? Where am I on this map? What, what's next? What radio call is next? You know, Scott, to the Mike Zulu, you're five miles from five is turn left heading 330, maintain 2000 till establish your clear GPS runway 36 at Ocala. You should be able to rattle that off and know exactly how to respond to that, exactly how to read that back, and that should check everything they told you. Yep, that's right. Everything's good. That should sound, that should roll off your tongue like plain English. It should sound so, so good. Focus on those sort of things. Where am I at? Asking yourself, take it to the next level. What's next? What's next? So one of those things is the brief. I teach to brief my approaches on the ground. Do you remember in the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge day, oh, in the teens maybe? It was the UPS accident, 1354 I wanna say, UPS 1354. They briefed an approach, life was looking good, everything was great, they listened to the ATIS, all of a sudden the runway is notumed closed. Well, they didn't brief the other approaches. So they had to scramble to get ready to brief the approach to the shorter runway. Uh, they realized it's a non-precision approach, but there was, um, I don't know how into instrument flying you are, but there's a LNAV plus V. The plus V is, um, how do I word this? Manufactured vertical guidance. It's not like from, it, it's not gonna be on your chart or anything like that. It is, it is vertical guidance in your GPS database just to simply guide you and help you get down. It's not a precision approach though, to put it in plain English. So they're doing this in a nutshell. It had vertical guidance. It's a little more advanced than that. They misprogrammed the approach. They were waiting for the glide slope. It never came because it wasn't really a glide slope. It was a plus V, it was vertical guidance. Either way, they misprogrammed it, programmed it wrong, decided to turn the autopilot off and hustle down at 1,400 feet per minute, twice as fast as they should have been doing um, in this aircraft, and had CFIT, controlled flight into terrain. It's a pretty extreme example. They briefed one thing and got another. Welcome to aviation. You ever brief the ILS and got the GPS, or brief the GPS and got the ILS instead? If not, you will. You ever realize they were, you brief everything for three, six, and the winds change, and all of a sudden, approach call seven says, hey, tower's moving operations to one eight, and you go, uh, okay, let me figure that out real quick. If you take the time to brief the approaches where they should be briefed, which is on the ground, you become inherently safer, thinking ahead. I've done a million videos on how I brief approaches, so I'm not gonna get into it. I use the acronym RMARTHA. You can just search online, M0A, how to brief approaches, or search on YouTube. I'm sure our video will come up, and you will find it. Um, there's a science behind it, and it starts with briefing everything on the ground. Now, you should be able to change it up kind of midstream in the air like that, but you change it up that easily because you've already briefed that approach and you've already worked through that approach before. That's why that change up becomes so easy for you. It should, it should be a non-event, honestly, having that happen because you've already thought it through. You've already briefed that approach. You know what's possible. You know what the mist is. You know all of these things ahead of time. Focus on that. Here's the other and the last little tip for getting the most out of your instrument lessons. When you're a little deeper into your instrument training, practice your emergency procedures. What if you had an engine failure in IFR conditions? Pull the chute, so you Cirrus pilots would say. That's what I would say too, in a Cirrus. 
What if you're in a humble 172? A little Piper Archer, what, what do you do? What are your IFR lost comm procedures? We think about lost comm procedures, but you think, oh, my radio has gone bad. No, you could have an electrical fire, electrical system issue. You could have a, um, remember we had our alternator circuit literally catch on fire at one point in the IFR environment to do my zoo. I wasn't flying it. Tom, who edits this podcast, was flying it. Tom can tell you what, 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 uh, what happened there. He and Matt, 7,700, fire trucks came out, landed, life was good. And we got a new alternator, a circuit breaker, 60 amps. Um, still don't know what caused it entirely, but that, that's how electricity works sometimes, right? These weird flukes of things. Practice, so when everybody else is hitting the panic button, you, you're chilly. You are calm. When everyone else is hitting the panic button, you are just chilling and everything is good because you've trained for this. You train that primacy becomes recency and you work through all these levels of learning uh, and, and you just have it. That when people hit the panic button, you're hitting the classic, do you remember the staples, that was easy button? That was easy. You're, you're hitting that, no, it's not gonna be easy by any means, but that's the crude analogy, but that's where I want you thinking. That's how I want you operating through all of this. Radio communications, situational awareness, and don't neglect your emergency procedures. You'll go a very long way and you'll get the most out of every dollar and every minute you spend working to become an instrument pilot and beyond. Because let me tell you something, radio communications diminish. Situational awareness diminishes. Those skills, shooting approaches, that diminishes. The raw skill of flying sticks with you. But what to say, when to say it, where am I now, what to do next, you fall behind the airplane faster when all those things are, are those skills are diminished. Focus on that. M Zero Nation, thank you for playing full out on this, full out on the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. What an incredible blessing you all are. Have an amazing blessed rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.